Has the world gone crazy? Life is difficult. Jobs, bills, health, relationships. When you need help, where do you turn? It seems everyone wants to sell you a package to fix your life. Welcome to Christian Impact. Impacting your life with spiritual truth. I am Dr. Kelly Blanton, and I'm sharing practical truths in the Bible that can truly change your life. Today, April 21st, 2022. We continue our series, Chronicles of the Kingdom, Lesson 15, The Heart Tree. This is very much a Resurrection Sunday or Easter message. Not in a traditional sense, but still in a sense that we are celebrating our risen Savior. And today as we talk about the heart tree, oh, it's about trees, it's about plants. Well, we're going to continue talking about how figurative language in Scripture, things like trees, roots, soil, um, seeds, uh, they are all important in understanding God's kingdom plan for us. Uh, how do we live in this? How does this expose the enemy's um, work in our life? And so I want us to to look at this. We're going to talk about, you know, trees. What do trees symbolize in the scripture? Are they just trees? Let's look at Isaiah 55, 12 says, For you shall go out with joy and be led forth with peace. The mountains and the hills shall break forth into singing before you, and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. I can remember being in college back in the 90s and hearing a song about, and the trees of the field will clap their hands. I personally thought it was, I don't know, just a dumb line. I just, I didn't get it. I thought it was really sort of stupid. Um, but that that was me at that time. I didn't understand what are the trees. That trees don't have hands. What is this about? It's figurative language. Isaiah 61, 3 says, To console those who mourn in Zion, to give them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they may be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. And here we see these trees of righteousness, but it's referring to people. And that's to understand that trees are the fields are people. They're symbolizing people, men, women. But more than that, they're also symbolizing the life structure of a man. What do I mean by a life structure? Well, we're going to be looking at the parable of the sower in Matthew 13. And we're going to be going through that pretty thickly. Um, but before we get to that, um, many of you have already read that. And you understand uh, th- what, what's going on there. That's The soil is representing the heart of a man. And, of course, we know that the heart is referring to our spirit, our inner man. Uh it relates to the spirit realm. And so, in getting there, I know we're not there yet, but we will. But I just I want to set some things up. Because if the heart of a man is like in the soil, if, if that's what that is, then the, and the tree is the structure that is grown, then... It is the seed that the plant that grows into that tree or that that plant. I want us to understand this before we get into this. Soil does not determine what type of tree grows. The seed does. The seed is what determines what kind of plant will grow in the soil. Now, why is that important before we get into these other scriptures and parables and understanding that? Because many times when you, we go through the parable of the sower and we talk about the soil, and I'm speaking to believers who ha- have read the Bible, grown up in church, been disciples, you've heard this parable many, many times in your life. There are many non-believers who have heard this parable many times in their life. 
and we so much focus on the soil. But we sometimes need to stop and understand that it's the seed that produces the tree. And the tree is this live structure that we have. And so it's the seed that determines the nature of our tree or our very live structure. It's the seed. The fruit that grows on the tree, that is our deeds or our actions. And I want us to understand that the fruit, those deeds and actions, are always determined by the nature of the tree. If the nature of the tree is to be an apple tree, then the fruit will always be apples. And if you, if that's because the seed that was planted was an apple seed. You cannot plant an apple seed and it grow a tree that produces oranges. That's an orange tree. That's the nature of orange tree. It's determined by the seed. The fruit is determined by the nature of the tree. This is common things. Well, why is this so important? Well, let's, let's look at some scriptures. Matthew 7, verses 16 through 20. You will know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? Even so, every good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a bad tree bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Therefore, by their fruits, you will know them. This is, again, pointing out what? We know people by their fruits. But their fruits are determined by the nature of the tree that they are, which is determined by the seed that is planted. Matthew 12, 33 through 35 says, Either make the tree good and its fruit good, or else make the tree bad and its fruit bad. For a tree is known by its fruit. Brood of vipers, how can you, being evil, speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. A good man out of the good treasure of his heart brings forth good things. An evil man out of the evil treasure brings forth evil things. So therefore, I want us to see that what? Trees are about life structures. Fruit is about deeds. And seeds. What are seeds? Well, you know, as we get into this, seeds is what is going to form that very nature and ultimately the fruit. It's the seed that determines the type of tree. And this is where we're going to look at Matthew 13, the parable of the sower. And I'm going to read the whole thing. Uh, verses 1 through 9 is the parable, and verses 18 through 23 is Jesus interpreting that parable. So let's read this together. Starting, starting verse 1, chapter 13, Matthew. On the same day, Jesus went out of the houses and sat by the sea, and a great multitude were gathered together to him, so that he got into a boat and sat, and the whole multitude stood on the shore. Then he spoke many things to them in parables, saying, Behold, a sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seed fell by the wayside, and the birds came and devoured them. Some fell on stony places, where they did not have much earth, and they immediately sprang up because they had no depth of earth. But when the sun was up, they were scorched because they had no root, and they withered away. Some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprang up and choked them. But others fell on good ground and yielded a crop, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. He who has ears, let him hear. Then later, Jesus' disciples asked him, What did this mean? And he taught them. So for, starting in verse 18, says, Jesus says, Therefore hear the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, then the wicked one comes and snatches away what was sown in his heart. This is he who received the seed by the wayside. But he who received the seed on stony places, this is he who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet he has no root in himself. He endures only for a while. 
For when tribulation or persecution arises because of the word, he immediately stumbles. Now he who receives seed among the thorns is he who hears the word, and the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word, and he becomes unfruitful. But he who receives seed on the good ground is he who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and produces some a hundred, some sixty, some thirty. So, we're looking at this parable, we look at the explanation, and Jesus says what? The seed is a word. And in specific context, he says the seed, in this context, is the word of the kingdom. But I want us to stop and understand something before we get into this. He says the seed is a word. And although he is talking about the word of God, the word of the kingdom, the word that he is bringing, Notice that seeds determine the nature of plants. If you want the patterns of your life to be kingdom focused, if you want to be kingdom minded, if you want to operate in God's kingdom, if you want to function in this, then you need to receive the word of the kingdom. You need to receive the words of Jesus, the word of God. But I want us to understand there's more than just one kind of seed in life. Matter of fact, Scripture says there are two kinds of trees, therefore two kinds of seeds. If you go back to Genesis chapters 1, 2, and 3, in reference, I'm not going to read those. We have been through those. But we have talked about what? The tree of life, whose seeds would bear the word of the kingdom, life eternal, but we also see there's a tree of the knowledge of good and evil. This was the tree we were told not to eat from. These are the seeds that you do not want to grow in your heart. Why? Because the seeds of the tree of knowledge of good and evil only produce the fruit of death. They only produce death. It's sin. And the life structure that we end up growing is a sinful life structure. They're bad seeds. You know, and we've seen what bad seeds produce. And we all have to deal with it. You know, uh, you know, bad seeds produce ungodly heritage. What do I mean by that? An ungodly heritage. I'm not talking about bad parenting. I'm talking about being born with sin nature. Romans 5.19 Therefore just as through one man sin entered the world and death through sin and thus death spread to all men because all have sinned. You know, it's been passed down as a heritage. Psalm 51.5 Behold, I was brought forth in iniquity and in sin my mother conceived me. That doesn't mean that sex is sin. What it means is that we were conceived. We're born in sin. It's, it's there. We can't get away from that. It's a bad seed. Another type of bad seed um, is the typical ungodly experiences. This is where we allow things in life to enter into us. Let's look at some of this Matthew 13 parable of the sower we begin in verse 19 when anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it the wicked one comes and snatches away what is sown in his heart this is he who receives seed by the wayside so we see it says the word of the kingdom now i want us to understand here the word of the kingdom is not just salvation this isn't just talking about being born again that's not what the seed is how do I know this because the birds come and snatch it away the birds being the enemy the devil the demons listen the devil cannot snatch away salvation but this is the word of the kingdom this is the message Maybe of salvation, but it's not salvation itself. This is the seed. And notice that what happens is that when this seed 
comes, it is what? It's not sown into the heart. It's not put into the soil. Why is that seed not going into the soil? Because the soil is hard. Do you understand that it's talking about the hard heart? When your heart is hard, it doesn't receive. And the enemy, what? He comes and takes it away. Now, listen, we can understand understanding God's word comes to you and you have a hard heart and you don't want to receive it. And because of that, the enemy will come and snatch it away from you. He wants to get that away from you as quickly as possible because he does not want that godly kingdom of God structure growing in your life. And he doesn't want to see it produce fruit. So he, if you don't want to receive it, he will snatch it from you. But you know, there's sort of an opposite thing that's true too. Because there's those seeds from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And those are seeds that the enemy wants to sow into your life. He doesn't want you to have a hard heart to worldly knowledge, to worldly philosophy. He wants you to receive those things. And he wants to implant those in you. And you know what? Our hearts need to be hard to hearing things that are not from the Lord. When we hear false philosophies, when we hear the, the teachings of the world, we do need to be hard on those. We don't want those to enter into us and begin to germinate. We want to reject those teachings. We want to receive the word of the kingdom, but we we need to be hard against what? The seeds from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Because it looks good. You know, we think, wow, having knowledge of good and evil would be a good thing, right? Well, no, it's not, actually. And it takes us away from the Lord. So we need to reject those. Let's go on to that, that, that stony places in verses 20 and 21. It says, but he who received the seed on stony places is he who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet he has no root in himself, but endures only for a little while. You know, when the word of the kingdom cannot be brought forth because of, quote, stony hearts. And I can, I have not had this personally. I've heard stories. I've had friends that tell stories. My grandfather farmed, but I didn't have to do a lot of the work on those farms as far as the prep. I did a lot of work as far as visiting and picking. I can remember picking beans and shelling and doing things like that, picking watermelons, but never actually, you know, preparing the ground. But I've had some friends that had parents or grandparents in older generations, and they talked about pulling rocks out of the field, pulling the stones, and they said no matter how many times they did it or how many years they did it every time they plowed up there were more rocks they did not they said it was like the earth was producing these rocks they said it was it was so frustrating and they hated it um but we have to understand our hearts can produce these rocks these stones and if the seed falls on the rock it can't root it, it can't grow a root there's nothing that gets down in there uh, to grow and so that we want when persecution tribulations when hard stuff comes the root just shrivels up i'm living in el paso it's hot the summers are terrible um the heat from the sun the sun will cook things it, it, it fries things and i've been planting gardens and plants and you know what if the root if that plant is anywhere exposed to the sun you know it'll kill it it, it will kill it in a single afternoon it doesn't take days, whatever, to drive. I mean, it will immediately kill that root. That root needs to be in the soil, away from the sun, preferably someplace sort of moist. Uh, that's that's what that's those seeds need to germinate, to grow. They need those roots. And so, but we, but what about this stony stuff? You know, these, the, these are those things that cause us to stumble those persecutions you know it's it, it takes maturity to deal with digging out these rocks in our life but likewise when the enemy throws seeds we don't want those to take root and we want to be hard and reject them but sometimes they can get into us and you know what 
we need to pluck them out the same way we pluck out those rocks. Um, this means that we need to develop convictions. These, these, these rocks are beliefs and convictions. Now, what does that mean? Well, we can sometimes carry beliefs and convictions that are contrary to the kingdom. And when we do that, and the Word of God comes to us, our preconceived beliefs and convictions can reject the Lord. We see that in Scripture. You see that with Israel being delivered in the Exodus, how they complained, how they just didn't believe God. You see that in the lives of the Pharisees. They believed that Jesus was going to come, and he was going to what? Establish a physical kingdom right here, right now. And when he didn't do that, they were willing to kill him. They sent him to be crucified. Why? Because he did not fit with their preconceived convictions. Church, we don't want to be like this when it comes to the word of the Lord. We want Jesus to have his way. We need Jesus to what? Man, I want you, Lord, to take root in my heart. But there are times when those stones can be helpful. Because, you see, sometimes the enemy will come and will bring forth teaching. And we're seeing this a lot. There's many, many churches. There are many, many ideas that enter in the church that sound really good at first. But then as they begin to grow, they come into contradiction with our beliefs and convictions, such as the divinity of the Lord. There are teachings that begin to say that he wasn't really God. He was just a good teacher. Well, that would be against the beliefs of Scripture and should be rejected. We, we, we see this. This is what happens with most Mormons, most Jehovah's Witnesses. Uh, they come and they talk well, but in the end, it begins to twist. Many cults are begun this way. They, they take Christians and they begin to give them a good teaching. And you go, yes, yes. But it begins to twist. Pros many, much of the prosperity gospel. You know, it sounds good at first. God wants you to be prosperous. God wants to provide for you, God. And we go, yes, yes, yes. But it becomes into a materialistic money thing that has nothing to do about the Lord or Scripture or what God really wants to do. You have to remember, the, the money that we want, that we want to prosper on, has got the image of Caesar on it. And God is not interested in Caesar's stuff. It's, it's, it's a product of the enemy and the enemy system. And I guarantee you, when you stand in heaven someday, you won't be paying for things in dollars. A matter of fact, you won't be paying for things in gold. How do I know this? Well, he says the Bible says the, the streets are paved with gold, right? Well, yes. How much do you want asphalt? How many of you are fighting to get some asphalt? Please pay me in some asphalt. No, you walk on it. It's dirt. Do you understand that the gold that we value today here in the physical realm is like dirt that you walk on in the kingdom. The things that we value here is like dirt in the kingdom. Why? Because the kingdom is so much better than gold. It is so much better than these things. And so we need to have the convictions to follow the Lord, and we also need to have convictions to throw out this other seed that could enter into our heart and could grow into something sinful. Let's look at that thorny soil in verse 22. It says, Now he who receives seed among the thorns is he who hears the word and cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word and he becomes unfruitful. You know, I've taught messages on this for years. The cares of this world will choke the life of God out of us. And I see that so much in the church in the United States, in the Western world. We are so concerned about our standard of living, about being comfortable. I know people that leave churches because they're made uncomfortable, because it goes against their normal standards. Listen, you're being choked. You're being choked. And what? Because you're getting choked, you're not producing any fruit. Now, if I can 
get you to remember we just read a scripture about what happens when trees produce bad fruit or trees are unfruitful. I think of that John chapter 15 about vines that don't produce. They're what? They're worthless and are cut down and thrown to the fire. If we don't produce fruit, you can't say I'm a good tree, I just don't produce fruit. I think of Jesus when he went to the fig tree and it had no fruit on it and he cursed it and it died. We are called to produce good fruit. We are called to do that. It's, it's a work of God in our lives. And if that fruit is not happening, it's because the Holy Spirit of God is not working in our life. And if he's not working in our life, then we're not a good tree. We're a bad tree. And so the it was a bad seed in us. And we, we don't want that in us. We want to be good producing. We want to what? Produce what? 160, 30 fold. That's what God has called us to do. So we want to make sure that the words that come to us that want us to be more concerned with life, the cares of this life. And you see, this sounds so contradictory. And even in saying this, I, I can hear the complaints. Yes, but I have to live. Yes, but. It sounds just like the people that told Jesus, I'll come follow you, but first, let me go bury the dead. Let me go bury my father. You know, that sounds like a good thing, doesn't it? You want to take care of the burial of your parents? You know, one said, I just bought a field. I need to take care of it. You know, good stewardship, Lord. If these things sound good, but it's a care of the world that's keeping you from the kingdom. And I think about when Jesus said, what does it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his soul to hell? We don't want that in our life. We want to be what? We want to be the good soil. Like verse 23, but he who receives the seed on good ground is he who hears the word and understands it. We need the word of God and we need to understand it. Because why? if we do that, the structure, the tree, the life structure that grows in our life will produce good fruit. It produces good things in our life. Now, let's change the pace a little bit because I talk about these seeds and how to care for things. It can be a little nerve-wracking for some people. Philippians 4, verses, uh, the back half of verse 7 through 9 says, And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Finally, brother, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are a good report, if there's any virtue, if there's anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. These things which you have learned and received and heard and saw in me, these do. And the God of peace will be with you. I want, to, I want you to see something there. The peace of God will guard your hearts. Now we can get to the guard our minds because this is what we think about things. But the peace of God guards our hearts, our spirit. The peace of God. Jesus is the Prince of Peace. And he guards us. He guards us. And because of that, finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, all these whatever things are there what? These are things that we do. Things we do. These are fruit. We begin to think and we begin to do good things. Why? Because it's part of our life structure. And you see, God will guard our hearts. Our hearts is what? Soil. You want to have a good soil? You know, it needs to be guarded by the Lord. And, and what guards it? It's the peace of God. It is the peace of God. In other words, if we're more concerned about receiving the word from God, and allowing him to grow in our lives, we, our, we're guarded. We're guarded. We don't have to worry about these, these, these things that will come in because we know that Jesus Christ himself is guarding our hearts. And he frees us to live life. 
Proverbs 23, 7 says, For as he thinks in his heart, so he is. You know, so as I think on these things, what these things that God has given us, the word of God, things that are pure, things that are noble, you know, as we do these things, the life structure of the kingdom is built in us, and it will produce fruit. Likewise, if you receive bad seed, then what happens is you be, you begin to think and dwell upon this sinful life structure. That's many people that are addicted. They're constantly thinking about their sinful habits. We need to be thinking about what? The things God has and receiving what God does. So the question I want to leave you with is what are you allowing to be planted in your soil? What are you watching, listening to, thinking about? Are you going to let someone else decide what's going to get planted in your heart? Or are you going to receive what God wants to plant in your heart? Let's pray. Father, I thank you, Lord, that we're talking about the heart tree and the life structures of the kingdom. Lord, I thank you that you promise to guard our hearts, God. I thank you that as we celebrate your resurrection, that we can rest in the peace of knowing that you have paid for our sin. You've paid for our mistakes. You've repaid for our shortcomings. You've paid the price, and all we have to do is to receive you. Lord, we want to receive your word and your life transformation today. Lord, grow your will and your kingdom in us. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Check out the rest of this series if you have not. Chronicles of the Kingdom. You can see that on our website at christianimpact.net. Each one of these lessons for the next year is going to be building upon each other. So if I reference something and you're not familiar with it, please go back and reference some of the previous lesson material. It's there to help you in your growth as a believer. And until next time, God bless.